Welcome, welcome. Tonight we're going to have some fun painting pickles. And you might ask why pickles? Well, I had a project that I did last week and they seem like the perfect kind of subject matter for a little bit of fun uh, and easy for beginners to paint. And uh, so we'll do a little color mixing tonight and we'll do a little drawing and we'll do a little painting. So if you are new here, well, first of all, what's happening? I mean, you're here, hopefully, ready to paint. So welcome. If you are new here, my name is Paige, and I am the chief pixel pusher and paint brusher over at Gumption. And several times a month, we have these live streams where we get to get together and do a little painting and a little paint along, if you will. This class will last about an hour. So kind of planned for that. Sometimes they go a little bit over, but just so you know, kind of how, as far as time goes. Also for this class, um, you're welcome to look up pickle reference imagery. If you need to have a picture to paint from, I'm gonna actually have an example up on the screen for us to paint from and um, yeah, feel free to Google that if you want to. I don't have any of that tonight for you. Uh, if you want to look at our calendar, you can go to IHaveGumption.com forward slash calendar and uh, check out when I'm airing and when I'm doing Patreon because I do a Zoom on Patreon once a month and that will be next week so I won't be on YouTube. Also, if you have questions, comments, you want to say hello, please do it in chat and let me know that you are here. If you're new here, introduce yourself because you're among friends and we like to know when people are tuning in. It looks like we have a couple comments here, so we'll address them. Ah, oh, Brenda, Brenda, it's so nice to see you. Uh, I love that you're tuning in tonight. So super cool uh, to be here with you. So awesome. All right. Before we get started, though, I have an ad. This is the first ad that I have done on this channel, and it is a self-generated ad, uh, admittedly. But we'll go through to our sponsor, and then we will get started painting. So get ready to have a little fun. Are your water bottles sad and colorless? Does your drab computer need a facelift? A little Botox, if you will? Are you in need of a little humor? A giggle? Look no further. Sticker of the Month Club is here to brighten your spirits, your notebooks, your skateboards, and oh, so much more. Each month, members receive a special Gumption Illustrated sticker in the mail. These fabulous stickers are thick, durable, and weather-resistant. Members will receive stickers before they're released to the public. But that's not all. You'll receive other fun goodies too, like special edition, members only stickers, or postcards, or even some original artwork. What are you waiting for? For the price of a cup of coffee, you'll get a small piece of joy in your mailbox that keeps on giving. Sign up today at patreon.com forward slash gumption. That's patreon.com forward slash gumption to get your stickers today. You won't regret it. Hey, so thanks for sticking around through that and let's get started. So I'm gonna switch my camera view up here. I am so glad to see you here, Brenda. So that is super cool. Thanks for tuning in. All right, so let's switch up our camera. I'm really excited I got a new mouse and of all the things it's making my life a lot easier so it's a little things I tell you all right so you can kind of see uh, what we're gonna be painting I'm gonna throw up this image here so you can see it and you can paint along and uh, you know if you have any questions or you need me to make that screen go away just let me know in chat hey Laurel it's so great to see you here too girl so I'm glad that you love your new stickers and uh, I'm glad that you're tuning in tonight. Okay, so let's get started. So tonight we are gonna actually be, let's see if we can get our camera back here. We're gonna be sketching first. So I'm gonna just move the screen for a moment so you can kind of sketch along with me here. Um, pickles are pretty easy. They're, you know, they're cucumbers. so. They have kind of funky shapes, and so I'm just going to use my, my pencil here and just sketch out this 
funky looking cucumber. I really like the weirder the shape, the more I like it, I think. So totally fun. Now this might be kind of light for you. I sketch really lightly uh, when I am painting in watercolor because we don't always want that showing through. So I'm gonna make this one kind of a weird curved one. You do you, you figure out what works for you. This one is like a little weird, but let's do this, curve it out a little. Now, if you've never seen one of these, this is a kneaded eraser. I've just, I think I was on the phone today playing with it and put it in a little ball here. But what's nice about these kneaded erasers is they erase really nicely and easily without removing your paper. I'm also using Canson XL paper. It comes in a blue pad. It's very inexpensive and actually very durable. That's great for beginners. So if you have to order it through Amazon or Dick Blick, uh, you can do that pretty inexpensively. All right, so I have my shapes for, for my pickles. I'm going to just kind of do some directional lines here because we have these kind of lines in pickles. And also, since I'm here, I'm gonna figure out my light is coming from this direction. Sometimes it's handy to draw a little arrow to remind yourself where the light is coming from. And I'm gonna draw just some patches of white. Now, my goal is not to paint in these areas, but preserve them for a highlight. I'll zoom in here a little bit. You can kind of see what's happening here. Now, I kind of don't use um, Miskit or Frisket or uh, what, you know, to block out these areas. I usually try to paint around them, but if you have a hard time, with your paint control, you certainly can use, use it to block out your, your whites. And if you accidentally paint over your white areas, don't be afraid, there are ways around it to make it a little bit easier for you. You can see when I was drying this with my hair dryer, things went a little haywire, so also note that. Okay, so first we've got to mix up some paint and we're going to do this the old-fashioned way when uh, with mixing color because sometimes I use convenience colors quite a bit on this channel and of course we want you to learn how to mix your own colors. That's part of the fun with watercolor. All right, bear with me here. So I'm gonna use some ultramarine blue. You see, this is a really pretty blue here. And, and generally, you're actually gonna to wanna to use your yellow first so you don't make your yellow all green, but uh, I went the opposite way, so. I'm gonna add some yellow to this and mix a really nice green here. I'm using a uh, Hansa yellow, so if you have something that's like a lemon yellow, uh, that will work just fine. Of course, if you have some different yellows and different blues, you're gonna get a different kind of green. You could use a teal, a cobalt teal like this with a yellow and get a very like vibrant green. But for tonight's class, we'll just do it this way. So I'm going to mix a couple. I'm going to mix one that's kind of this light green color and one that's a little bit darker. So that just means I'm going to use more ultramarine blue in this mixture. Mix it until you're happy with 
what you have there. Okay, so I have a good uh, selection here of color and we may use a, um, I have a color called Sodalite that is a dark, kind of a dark navy blue. It would be the same as a Payne's Gray, essentially. So you can see that. So you can make your green even darker if you need to. So if you have Payne's Gray or a dark color like this, you can mix some of that up too if you want to add a little darker shading to your pickle. And actually, I'm going to mix one more color. So hopefully you're still hanging on with me here. I'm going to mix a very light ultramarine blue. So just a little bit of pigment and much more water. This is going to be for my pickle shadows later on. Okay, so I guess I should ask you guys, can you hear me okay? My microphone is a little farther away. Hopefully you can. I'm rustling, rustling around here and making quite a bit of noise. So I'm going to use a bigger brush here. This is a size 10 brush. And what I'm going to be doing is I am going to lay down water first, and then I'm going to put in my pigment into this wet water. This is what's called the wet and wet technique. And I'm going to try not to use too much water, but it's super dry here in Idaho. So if you have to use a little bit more, you can. And one thing that I have noticed about pickles, and I'm going to throw this up on the screen. As you can see in my illustration here, let's see if I can get my mouse over here. So a couple of things to note here. Pickles are kind of funky looking. They've got kind of a lighter air end and a darker end. And so I wanted to make sure that I highlighted that within this image. Now, if you look at this pickle here, it's got a great shape, it's got some great light, but it gets a little flat over here. And so when you're assessing artwork, other artwork, maybe not, maybe not your own, but we don't want to necessarily have it looks this flat. So we're going to try to make sure that we are good with our light tonight. So I'm going to do my best to guide you the best that I can here. So, all right, so I'm going to lay down some water here. You may have to tilt your page to be able to see it. And I'm just only putting water in the areas where I want paint to go. I'm going to avoid my highlighted areas if possible. Sometimes, you know, we make mistakes and that will fill it in. And I'm just going to do one pickle at a time to save myself a little bit of anxiety here. Okay, so it looks like I may have covered this area where I want to have light, but we'll just see what we can do. And I'm going to start with this lighter color first and drop it in here and you can just watch this color spread and this is what's really wonderful about this wet and wet technique is it allows your paint to just be blend beautifully and kind of naturally you're letting watercolor do what watercolor does well Okay, so one end I'm putting this lighter color, then I'm going to go in with this darker color and hit this other end. Now you can see my white area got covered up, but I'm not going to panic. I'm just going to kind of blend this into this other green. Light's coming from this direction, so I'm going to have a darker color on this side. You can even roll it down here on the bottom. And I'm just gonna kind of marry these two colors together. Now you can see I need to have more light over here. So I'm gonna 
dry off my brush here and take my brush in this wet area and kind of lift some of this color. Now that might be a little more that, that I want to lift, but what I can do here is add in this lighter green color. I'm going to have to make a little bit more. Then I can just tap it in there while this is still wet. You know, it takes a little practice sometimes to to work wet and wet before everything can dry, but do your best. We really are here to have some fun. Just tapping in a little bit of color. What's great about mixing your own colors that I really do like is that the colors kind of separate and they create some nice granulation, which is kind of this textury stuff over here. And then you can also kind of draw in your, the creases or lines that we have for the pickles. It may or may not kind of work at this juncture. We can always add them in later. And if you have some pooling, you can always kind of move your paper around to kind of get that kind of moving around. Now I'm going to get out my hair dryer, and this is the time that I will mute myself, and you can keep painting. I kind of do this before I can do anything else wrong here. So I am going to mute and be back in a moment.
All right. Are you still with me? <laughs> it seems like it's taking longer for things to dry for me. I'm not sure. Maybe it's just me. All right. So now that we have this mostly dry, I think I'm actually going to work on this other pickle. And then we're going to go into the details here. So this gives you a second time to kind of observe and paint along with me. Now you can see the colors of these two examples, the other example that's up on the window now, and this example are pretty different. And that's because I used um, convenience colors for my other pickle. So in this, uh, in this image, let's see if I can get my mouse up here. In this image, I'm using sap green and green gold. Both are colors by Core watercolors. And in this one, I'm using ultramarine blue and Hansa yellow, also colors that are core colors. But you can see the difference between a convenience color and a mixed color. And one is not better than the other. Uh, it's just personal preference. So just know that. Okay, so again, we're going to do this wet and wet technique. Here, and I'm just painting with water where I want my paint to go, preserving my light areas where I can. If you can't see where your water is on your page, then lift your page up and you can see where it is. Of course, if you have things that you'd like to see us paint together here on this channel, I am always open to a suggestion. So uh, you have to throw it in chat and uh, let me know, but I'm always open to having fun painting different things. It doesn't have to all be food stuff. Okay, so I'm starting out with my light green color here tapping it in the top. Now I just have to pick an end that's kind of the lighter of the two. And I think that I will make it, the lighter area is gonna be up here at the top and the more, the darker area will be down below. So I'm gonna go in with my darker green here at the bottom. Now you can see some of this has dried already. And I'm not a big fan of lines always. So I'll add a little more water here, kind of diffuse this. Again, our light's coming from this direction, so I'm gonna move a little bit of this darker color along this edge to give this guy a little bit of dimension. I think I'm liking this pickle a little bit better. Than my other pickle. And you can also try to put in your lines if you want to at the same time here. You can see this one granulated a lot and we have a uh, a pooling here, but I'm liking so far this guy. So I'm going to dry him really quick. You keep painting along. I'm going to mute myself and dry this one and we'll start working on some details.
Okay, so how are you guys doing for time if you're painting along? You might need a little more time. So it kind of depends on how happy you are at this stage. I like to add a little bit more um, definition and Sometimes I'll add more color. So if you want to make these a little more vibrant, you can you can go over them again. I think I want to kind of fix this area and I may want to add a little bit more warmth to this end, which would require a little bit more yellow and a little bit less blue. I always recommend testing out your color on another piece of paper so you can kind of see what, what you're working with, so it's not a shock. So I might just kind of go in and add a little bit of this warmer color, and I can kind of diffuse out this big blob that I have. That is what we call the bead that sort of just ended there. And sometimes when I'm softening edges, I, I'm using a paper towel. And just to do a little softening there, I might add some more of this color up here. And that starts kind of making this feel really warm and Kind of dimensional. I'm going to do the same thing with my other pickle here and this is the lighter end so I'm going to just gently kind of spread this color and again if you want to soften an edge I just take my brush clean it off tap it on my paper towel and then take the edge of my brush and kind of move it back and forth and soften edges. Also at the same time I can mix up a little bit more of this kind of darker green color with ultramarine blue and Hansa yellow here. And I can again go in and add kind of some contouring here, shading if you will. I'm going to do it over here too. And this is where you can kind of add your lines in here too. You can lift them out or you can paint them in. Also, sometimes I like to clean up the edges, so I'll take the point of my brush. And you can draw in these thin lines. These silver brushes um, are great because they have lots of brush for your money, but they have a nice point, so you can fill in areas or you can use the tip. And I'm really liking this area, how we have kind of this dark area here, this core shadow. And so I'm going to just try to mix up a little bit darker water here. And maybe you can kind of see here the consistency of my water. And we'll see how it goes. 
I may need a smaller brush for this. Now, I'm not loving that, but just kind of diffuse. That a little. Maybe we can do a little kind of core shadow here too. All right. Okay, so let's say I'm going to move to a smaller brush. Now you can keep perfecting your pickles to your heart's desire. I know I will, um, I like to just do an outline a little bit to give it kind of this crispy edge. So I'm just mixing this sodalite with my green, you can see I'm just making a darker green here. And you can run it along your edge if you want. You may need a little bit darker pigment. Mine's kind of mixing with white here. That's not ideal. Kind of move it over here. Again, this is a preference thing. You know, I'm a little bit tighter of a watercolor artist. You can, you know, use a smaller brush to draw in some lines. One thing I really love to do with watercolor is do a subtle layer with a slightly darker color over the top. Just kind of does a really nice job of subtlety. It's great for like wood green and that sort of thing. You can also lift color too if you want. Uh, and that just requires a clean, clean brush. So I'll demonstrate that actually, because this is a great technique to know. So you wet your brush, you tap off the excess water, and you scrub in an area that you want to lighten. Can you see that in the camera? And then you take your a clean paper towel. This is not necessarily a clean paper towel. And you can lift the additional water off of that. So if you get into a bind and you have uh, painted over your light highlight or you have an area like I do in this uh, image over here uh, where it's flat, you can use this technique to give something a little bit of dimension and lighten some of those areas. I'm going to keep plugging along here. We'll see if this is too dark here. If your, if your pigment isn't showing up where, how you want it, it just means that you need a little more pigment. Which means I need a little bit more. It's just not cutting it here. And again, this is a preference. Thing. You can also do this with a pen if you want. We are going to put a shadow in here.
again, feel free to throw out any questions or comments uh, in chat there. below our video or to the side. You can also, you know, if you want to use a one of your greens, you can define an edge with that green if you feel like you need to clean up an edge or you want to define something. You can do it that way too. Just play around and just have fun uh, with painting. That's really the whole point. That's why we do it because it can be very relaxing and fun. Okay, so now you might be asking yourself, well, we need to add the nubs in here. Uh, and what you can kind of just do the same technique that we've been doing. I think that I will take this darker green and I'm just going to create little circles on my pickles here. You can just do a circle with your brush uh, or you can do a full circle and fill in the center we can always lift out a lighter color if we need to. Oftentimes watercolor will dry lighter. Uh, you'll notice that with other paints, sometimes they're darker once they dry. Uh, usually watercolor is lighter once it dries. And the difference is here we have like a paper that shines through or, you know, because watercolor is transparent. So I think that is part of the equation and just the nature of watercolor as well. I've had the opportunity to make my own watercolor paint and it is a fascinating journey into the paint. I never thought that I would ever be interested in in doing that, but it's pretty fun, really. Okay, so I'm just going to put these little circles all over here. You're going to want to do this once your paint really is dry, or else it's just going to spread everywhere. I should have told you that a little bit sooner, but hopefully you're kind of at a spot where you're able to add the little nubs on here. Food is a great place to start. A lot of you who um, follow this channel uh, have heard me say this over and over, but it, it really is a good place. Things in your home, if you're having a hard time figuring out what to paint, grab an apple or grab uh, some other food item like a donut or a cupcake or you know, maybe even just a glass or something from your kitchen. The hardest part a lot of times when you're doing art is just getting started. And it can be a thing that really inhibits us from moving forward. And it doesn't have to be that way. You should want to, you know, if you're into painting and you want to do it, it should be kind of a fun exercise for you. It can be very challenging, and sometimes you, we can get discouraged pretty easy. I have definitely been there. But have fun with it. There's just something about mixing the paint that's very much like meditation in its own right. So I'm gonna let these the little circles dry here and we're gonna paint in the shadow next. This is what really kind of grounds any kind of piece of artwork that might be a still life or a food illustration, in my opinion. 
So what I'm going to do is it looks like I got some green in with my blue here. I'm going to check my blue. This is ultramarine blue. I might need a little more here. That's a lot more. Switch here. Switch it up here. Normally I would recommend using uh, two containers of water so you can always kind of have one that's clean. But I didn't take my own advice tonight, so. <laughs> okay, so while these things are drying, I'm gonna take this really nice blue color and we have light coming from this direction, so it's hitting the top of our pickles here. It's gonna leave a cast shadow here. So just on this side. I'm gonna leave the shadow. I'm gonna do the same thing over here. And hopefully you don't have too much of your paint that's going to bleed in here. You really do kind of want your edge to be dry, but sometimes things happen here. So I'm just tapping in along the edge here. And we'll see how that dries. You could go a little bit darker with your shadow, but for now, I think this is gonna work for me. So I'm gonna get out my hair dryer and I'm gonna dry this and mute you. Oops. And I will be right back. Maybe.
Okay, you can see where, uh, you know, I have some pooling here with my paper and it creates this darker area. You can go ahead and soften that if you want. This is not quite dry, but I'm going to leave it. So we can move on to uh, giving our nubs a little bit of light. I am going to remove that screen for a moment so you can kind of see how we can address these. See, right now we just have these round, I'm going to zoom in here, these round areas of color. I have a small brush, and I think everybody who's doing watercolor should get a small brush or several small brushes. I like them for details. This is actually a Trakel brush, and you can find them online. They have lots of different kinds of brushes, but I have taken this brush and gotten it wet. I've tapped off on my paper towel and I'm going to demonstrate how you can lift so we can create light on this kind of nub. So that is one way to address these to make it feel like there is light hitting them. These might be a little bit dark, but see, and I drug my palm through that, of course. So I guess that's just tells me that I should make sure it's dry. But I'm going to go through and do this on these. You're probably going to have to dip your brush several times, tap it, and lift, or else you're just going to be dragging paint around. They don't have to be perfect because what you can do is you can go back in and darken behind them if you need to. And I'm just going to do this for every one of these. And we know where our light is coming from because we drew an arrow earlier. You can also, again, do this under your pickle if you need to. You got a little dark in an area or you want to accentuate a lighter area. Even these that I left kind of the center in there, I'm going to scrub those out too. And hopefully as we're moving around here, it will kind of dry and... Oh, there we go. We have a little more light here. And if you have an area where you want to put a nub and you don't have one there, you could do the same technique and pull out the color there, and then you can go back and paint it in. That's why I love watercolor, because it is pretty versatile. non-toxic and mobile which is great so if you go camping or you like to go outdoors that's a great time to take your paints with you if you have some quiet moments where you can just hang out outside and just do a little meditation all right so here are our pickles I'm gonna zoom out so what you can do is you can go back in with your darker green. I can use 
the sodalite or Payne's gray color, you can add to your green to just add a little bit of darkness. And if you want, you can kind of go in here and tap in a little bit of this to add that kind of core shadow. Only if you feel like you need it and you want to do that, or if you've taken too much light out of it. Here's one that I missed of pulling out the color, so I'm just going to make a note of that. Now you can use an even finer brush for this, and uh, sometimes I use those too, those really fine brushes. It's just kind of fun, fun to do here. So if you've been with me through the whole program, you've seen the little ad for Sticker of the Month Club through Patreon. And that's a new kind of thing that I'm doing. I have a lot of people who are at my local farmer's market who buy stickers from me and kind of thought of this concept so that they can have stickers year round because I only do market for about six months of the year. And... It keeps me creating and it also, you know, for people who love stickers, there's an option there. So if you're really into stickers and you're interested in the sticker of the month club, you can visit the Patreon over there. You can also visit the paint club, which is where we get together and we do a zoom once a month and paint in person. And that will actually be happening next month. I'm not next month, next week. Oof. It will be happening next month, but we won't be on YouTube next week. And what's cool about that is I get to see your smiling faces in real time. So you can ask questions in real time. Okay, so I'm gonna zoom out here really quick. And here we have some pickles. You, you could keep uh, playing with these, making it darker. You could even make the shadow darker and maybe I will show you how you can do that in case you are not satisfied with your shadow. And then as we are closing out tonight here, uh, if you have questions or comments or things that you would like to see in the future, Please throw that in chat before I let you go about the rest of your Thursday evening. Of course, it's always nice to have you guys, my uh, diehards who are here, Laurel and Colin, who also are Patreon patrons and supporters. I'm glad that you are hanging in there, uh, Laurel and Always happy that you guys are able to tune in or when you're able to tune in. So you can see I'm just kind of putting in this soda light and it seems super light here so it's not showing up really nicely. So that just means I'm going to put a little more pigment in there. You can tap this along the edge. Let's compare this to the other one and see if we like it better. I think I'm going to fill in that area because I think I'm going to like that a little bit better. And that will allow me to kind of smooth out this area that I drug my hand across to.
This one isn't bad and you can just leave your blue alone if you want to. Pickles. What's your favorite kind of pickle? I would say my favorite kind of pickle is a dill pickle. Never been a huge fan of sweet pickles, but I think that's just a, a taste preference. Okay, so I'm going to remove that pickle and we're going to switch our camera really quickly here. What questions do you have for me? Throw them in chat. All right, so Laurel, oh, she loves dilly beans. And if you are uh, her mother, my mother-in-law, if you have never had a dilly bean, they are delicious. And I kind of miss dilly beans. I feel like I haven't had so many in my life here lately. It's because your mom wants to have a life. I don't know. I may have to pick up canning, but I, I don't know that that's going to happen <laughs> anytime soon. But dilly beans would be a lot of fun to paint as well. All right, so still waiting for any questions that you might have. Uh, I appreciate you tuning in and being here with me. And if you're doing this class after the fact, which is always a great option, and you have questions, go ahead and throw them in chat. I see them and I can answer them in a pretty timely fashion. If you... If you want to learn more about me and see more of my artwork and just see the show schedule, you can go to IHaveGumption.com and check it out over there. Uh, I do lots of different kinds of artwork, but along with these classes. So if you want to check it out, check out stickers and whatnot, you can do that over there too. All right. And I want to say thanks to my Patreon patrons because you guys are the people who make this happen. And uh, what if I can get there? I've, I've changed everything around. But thanks, Colin and Laurel, for always being here and um, religiously doing classes with me. It's rad. And I appreciate you. So thank you so much. And if you want to learn about my Patreon, you can go to patreon.com forward slash gumption. And... You can go check that out too. All right. So I don't see any questions here, but I do appreciate you guys being here. And I hope that you have an awesome weekend. It looks like it's going to be warm again here in Idaho. So hopefully it's nice and pleasant where you are. And until next time, take care of yourself, keep painting, and I will see you later. Thanks for tuning in. Maybe.